Windsor Cut Day 59. Today we're going to be doing chest day. You might be thinking the last thing you did was chest day, and that was a couple days ago. I know, but it's just for the sake of habit, okay? I'm kind of like, uh, you know, so. Anyway. Maybe it's just because I like chest day more, though. We'll see. I think if I did back day and then I did chest tomorrow, had a day of rest, and then did legs, that would probably be the most ideal scenario. So, honestly, that might even be what I got to start doing. Because, yeah, I might have to do back today. I don't even know what I would do, to be honest. Like, just heavy rows, heavy anything. But I do, guys, I, I do miss the chest bump, though. Anyway, thank you guys for thinking with me for a second. I'm going to get some freaking creamer. All right, we're not, we're not super hyper restricting. All we're trying to do is just reduce our caloric intake from maintenance. So that's really the uh, moral of the story here. We're kind of loading the coffee with cream because it has carbs anyway. So. Uh, you know, actually, this isn't as much of a source of carbs as I thought it was. Is because anything that's really sweet, you kind of just automatically assume, oh, this has a lot of carbs. But I guess that's not the truth with this creamer. It's got some fat, got some carbs. We also have dinner being made tonight. It is pork with cream of mushroom soup. That's what it's cooked in. And cabbage with, I presume, butter. Amazing. So I'm, I'm extremely excited for that. I think I'm going to eat that before the gym today. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a little bit cold, a little bit chilly, but very sunny. So I'm cool with it. Any day that's sunny is a good day. I'm going to slay in this liquid IV. Boys, here's the thing. Okay. We're going to get a good pump. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sodium load today. Okay. I'm going to literally just have some more salt. Okay, I might throw off the electrolyte balance, but that's fine. Salt's fine. Who cares? All right. And I'm going to get a super extreme, like, Frank McGrath, Devin Larratt level forearm pump. If you guys know who those people are, it bas they're basically a Popeye in real life. That's what the, my forearms are going to look like by today's session. So just take a mental note of what these bad boys look like right now. Pretty big. Okay. And I'll actually go into detail about something else. Wrist to forearm ratio is very important. I naturally don't have very large wrists, right? They're pretty average, okay? So with that said, though, when I pack on the meat, okay, when I pack on all the meat right here, it enhances the forearm effect. Um, so don't forget the ratios, guys, how important they are. Even if my forearm isn't 20 inches, okay? It could still look pretty huge simply because of the taper, right? So it's like a, looks like a tent, you know? It's like a triangle. Anyway, I'm going to stay in this coffee. Well, I don't want to stay in it. I actually kind of want to enjoy this coffee off camera. But I also have a multivitamin to take. That, that liquid IV, by the way, consisted of two liquid IVs, which is 90 calories, plus green team. So anyway. I will see you guys in the gym. We're dealing with some major slippage on the shoes. Uh, the floor in the locker room was insanely foamy, okay? It had like foam and soap and suds all over it, so this is definitely going to affect the little calves starting workout that we're doing. But yeah, we forgot to mention the other start with calves thing just because. They've gotten adequate rest and they'll get adequate rest between the next sessions, so I figured why not get some extra work in.
So, it is. I'm literally doing calf raises. It's 4.05. So, let's see how this goes. <clears throat> We're gonna try to control it to the best of our ability. Really just get in a strong stretch and a pause in the bottom. I think that's where the most growth happens during a calf race anyway, at least for me. So. Unracking it is probably the hardest part. I think what I'm gonna do is, to minimize extra fatigue, I'm just gonna stop there for calf raises today. And we're gonna head straight to the... I did a lot pull down at a preacher girl. We'll think. All right, we're just gonna chill out on 200 today. I expected to be able to do less at this point. Uh, just because, um, you know, the cut. We're super carved up, probably the most we've been in a long time. Uh, and we got a ton of sodium in us as well. I mean, I had a half teaspoon of salt, and uh, I also had a great dinner. It was a very, very good, savory dinner with some jelly and butter and bread. All kind of carbs, so. Must be carbs from liquid IV, so. This thing has a pin missing, so I can't actually adjust it down. So, I'm just being a little weird, but I kind of have to like let myself float up into the seat for stability, which is annoying, but it doesn't really matter because we're still moving every weight. I want to try to control this set a little more than normal. I'm not going to be as explosive off the rip. 
I'm gonna try to stay still in that bottom two thirds of the range of motion and that should work pretty well. So, I'm trying to just go heavy on these today because this is like really the only other thing that was open for an hour, or at least the only thing I really felt like going to. So, I think I'm gonna go for the 55s and just go one at a time and just really try to move the weight. Pump is already kind of insane. That was pretty heavy, so we're dropping down to 35. Alright, we're gonna move on to some wrist curls. 
80 pound wrist curls in your face. We're just gonna hit some super heavy T-bar rows today. I'm gonna go for like four plates, see how it feels, but do keep in mind, I did biceps and forearms before these rows, so we'll see what happens, but I don't know. I, I kind of enjoyed that approach. I like to do what's least fatiguing first anyway, and then save the more fatiguing stuff for the end. So I might even flip some of the things I've been doing, man. Like chest day, start with flies. Back day, start with you know, some kind of more shortened position row. Start with some kind of more, you know, bicep exercise, form exercise, stuff that's not that fatiguing. I mean, today, I mean, I started with calves and I still feel very strong. And even though I've done a bunch of little things, right? I mean, except for the lap pull down, I do feel a little weak from that, but like these T-bar rows, man, they're about to feel pretty good, I think. So muscularly speaking, I feel powerful, but mentally speaking, I feel tired, if that makes sense. You know, guys, um, forgot to mention that three plates moved very, very light. So, excited to see what happens to four. I like this back day so much better than the one at the boxing gym, but in terms of 
elbow flexion movements, I like my boxing gym back day better because it prioritizes elbow flexors more. So. It looks pretty nice considering I haven't done it in forever. Uh, pump is really good. T ball moves both good. Not to mention the fact that this is a pain free back day. So, no low back pain here. Music is bumping. Hey, I appreciate that earlier, man. I was just curious, how many uh, sets you got left? Uh, like, Okay. Uh, I record my workouts on YouTube and stuff. Is it cool if I have it recorded for me? Yeah, you're all good, man. All right, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. What's your name? Jake. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, yeah, I felt weird with, like, the whole fucking... We'll, we'll redo that. We'll redo that. There you go. Nice to meet you. I'm Max. I come here with my brother, Joe. He's uh he's a bald guy about my height. Yeah, he comes here. We we always come here at around three, but tonight I'm coming in here late, so. I can leave it? Yeah, you can leave it on. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, right, it was good to meet you, man. For sure. Thanks for letting me work in. Hey, look at this backpack glitch coming in hot. Jeez, look at the veins out the wazoo, huh? All right, boys. Pump is ridiculous. So, it's a little bit faded because it's talking to some people, but still, just got done with a set, so. All right.
I will see you guys at home. What's up, boys? I'm coming at you in the dark right now because I was just watching a Larry Wheels and Dr. Mike video. Pretty entertaining. And then uh, I was editing a little bit, drinking a protein shake. You know the drill. So, <sighs> with that said, a little recap on today's workout. It was one of the best pumps I've ever had in my life. I saw a brachialis vein. I saw an ab vein. I'm seeing new veins every workout, which is uh, kind of a wonderful aspect of the cut. I carved up and sodiumed up tremendously. I electrolyted up. I did everything I could to achieve an amazing pump today, and I did. So I'm excited and happy that I was able to achieve that. Um, the lift was good. It was a little more free-flowing than it usually is. Kind of just seeing, hey, what's open? What do I like? Let me just do that. And um, the workout was actually better than normal by a lot. Now, I will say the back day, the pull day that I was doing was working really well. But what I think I'm going to start doing is applying the same logic I'm using on leg day to my other days. So, for example, um, on leg day, I start off with the least fatiguing thing, which is calf raises. And I build up to more fatiguing things by, you know, calf raises, hamstring curls, leg extensions, right? Um, and, you know, all those things have a relatively similar fatigue level because they're not using a whole bunch of muscle at once. And then I will jump to hack squats at the very end. And I'm still able to progressively overload and get a great stimulus from hack squats because I'm saving it for the end. and I'm not hitting that insane fatigue wall that you get from hack squats at the beginning, right? Because it's a very compound, heavy movement, very hard, big stretch, everything about it's intense. And if you do something like that first, it's going to impede the rest of what you do during the workout. So if I did leg extensions after, hamstring curls after, calves after, the, especially my calves, man, if I did them at the end, they wouldn't grow. I could say that with 100% certainty, they would grow very minimally, if at all, right? That's why most people's calves don't grow. So I'm going to apply the same logic to my pull day and say, all right, lat pull downs are using a lot of muscles. So I think what I'm going to do is allocate them later in the workout, maybe even the latest, and put all of my shorter position rows before that and put my bicep and forearm work first. So I might even start off with wrist curls, uh, which would be very strange, but I would be willing to try and experiment. Start off with heavy dumbbell wrist curls, then biceps, then do, um, you know, like I said, short position rows, then lengthen position rows, or I guess lat pull downs, which that, I just sounded dumb there, but you know what I'm saying. And then on chest day, same logic applies, least fatiguing thing first. So I'd probably end up doing chest flies uh, on the machine first and then I would do tricep push downs on you know a cable I would do those after and then I would do decline press then incline press and I think that's or in order of least fatiguing to most fatiguing in my opinion so I hope you guys uh, enjoy this video and stay tuned man I'm, I'm seriously gonna get shredded here I mean you're seeing ab veins already Seeing quad veins, seeing brachialis veins, veins out the wazoo. And uh, I think this next bulk especially is going to be record-breaking, history-making. Wow, that rhymed. That was cool. I'm going to end off on that. Take care, guys.